So, uh, so let me take you guys to that moment. That very moment, as I'm moving stuff around on my elbow, like Oreos in a baggie, I know, okay, I, it's this, everything's changed. Go up to the clubhouse, and as I said, the Christians are there, and they want to pray for me. Well, they do pray for me. And I make the decision at that point that I'm going to finally save these religious people from belief in God. I'm going to take them out of the dark ages and bring them into the Enlightenment. Long story short, what happens is we get back to Cincinnati. They invite me to go to a Bible study, and I went to say no, and a voice just like mine went, sure, I'll go. And so we go, <laughs> we, we go to this Bible study, and, of course, it's a setup just for me, right? You know, they... They, uh, they're, they're like nervous eighth grade boys trying to get up enough courage to ask a girl to dance kind of thing, you know? Yeah. And, and of course, every time I turn a corner, you know, they'd go, shh, he's coming, stop, no, no, you ask him, no, you start, shh, he's looking, stop, shh. Okay, so this little dance went on. So finally, we sit down to do the Bible study thing. And of course, I knew all about the Bible. It's unhistorical, it contradicts itself, the manuscripts have been corrupted, blah, blah, blah. Of course, never having read the Bible. I just know about this, right? <laughs> So we sit down, and I unload on these guys for about half an hour. And they had brought a hired gun, this, this, the, the, the chaplain guy. And uh, he was an old guy, at least 35. His name was Wendell. And, uh, and so I unload, and, and Wendell goes, uh, finished? And I'm in my sling, you know, and I go, yeah. You know, real arrogant, you know. And he says, wow. And I said, oh, I know. And he says, uh, guy said you were really smart, and you read books and stuff. And I said, yeah, and I couldn't resist. I said, oh, yeah, yeah, books without pictures. It was a big deal for baseball players, right? And, uh, and he said, you know, I can't answer your questions. And I said, oh, I know. He said, but you said one thing. You said, you want to believe in what's true and what's real. And, Frank, I want to believe in what's true and what's real. Will you help me? Now, at that moment, the ball players, about five of them, thought their chaplain guy had flipped and I'd gotten to him. So they're freaked out, you know. And so he looks at me sincerely, and he says, will you help me? And I was blown away. I had never met a, a religious person, whether it was the guys in the white shirts on the bikes or in front of the donut shop or the ching chings at the airport or whatever, who were interested in a dialogue. They always want to do a monologue. So here's, here's a religious person asking me for help and what's true and what's real. And I said, sure. How can I help you? He says, well, and he reached behind the sectional where he was hiding him, and he says, well, if you'll read these books, this, this explains what, what we believe better than, than, than we can do it, and maybe you can mark in the margins where the author's wrong, and we'll get back together again, and you can enlighten us, and then we can become happy and fulfilled just like you. <laughs> okay? Isn't that great? Great hook, right? So I, I, I get uh, mere Christianity by some guy named C.S. Lewis, Th that's right? What, that's what he gave you to read. The very first book by a Christian. I didn't know Christians wrote books. I didn't know. I had never met an intelligent Christian. You're either one or the other. It's like jumbo shrimp, you know? And so you can't, you can't be both, right? right? And so I'm reading, and I get to the place in Pittsburgh, of all places. Remember, we are family, the pirates. Um, I, and I'm reading. We hated the pirates. That's why I, I had to sing. Sorry. Um, and, uh, and I make the decision, okay, I don't know squat about churchianity. I don't know who Petra is or Striper or Amy Grant, you know, or Sandy Patty. But I've lived as an atheist and as an evolutionist, and based upon all my questions and reading mere Christianity and evidence demands a verdict and a whole bunch of other stuff, I made the decision in about six weeks that, you know what, I've been an atheist, and I'm at that 50% point one point. I'm going to identify myself as a Christian. Okay, so I make that decision literally in Pittsburgh in the bathroom. Okay? Flush my sins and my past life away. I'm a Christian. Okay? So now I walk out in the clubhouse. Now, the Christian guys, remember that I made fun of at the little Bible study thing? They're, they're watching me like a pot ready to boil. And, uh, and I come up to Tommy Hume, who's our I relief pitcher. I questions. I don't want to know no, 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 your story. No, no, this is great. No, stop. I'll, this is great. Hold on to him. Keep and, I go, and I go, Humey, um, uh, Humey, I just prayed to receive Christ. And he was sort of Pentecostal. And he goes, praise Jesus. And I was like, shh. Yeah. And I shushed him, you know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And, uh, we can let this out in doses. And, and I said, uh, I said, Humey, listen, I want to get back together with the guys and, uh, and talk about this. I said, oh, yeah. And he's thinking, man, we can teach him the words to all the songs now. It's like, no, dude, no. So we get back to the hotel in Pittsburgh. And I was the player rep, and I was used to talking to the guys. And, and I lock the door, and there's five of the guys in the room. And, and I'll clean it up, and you can fill in the blanks, okay? I'm a raw baseball player, brand-new Christian, like an hour old in the Lord. 
And I said, guys, listen, for five years I've been hanging out with you guys. And every time I'm vulnerable or have a bad game, which I had a whole bunch, you'd come up and quote want to share with me. Then I'd ask you questions. You'd go back, regroup, bring reinforcements, and now have fellowship with me, like gang up on me, you know? And I said, I asked you really great questions. You gave me really lame answers. I could have gone to hell because you don't know why you believe what you believe. 1 Peter 3.15 says you're to give to every man an answer, a reason for the hope that is within you, and to do it with gentleness and respect. You couldn't answer squat. You couldn't tell me why you believed, let alone answer my questions. I could have gone to hell. My blood would have been on your hands. So when I asked this, you should have said this. And I taught my first class in apologetics about two hours old in the Lord. So anyway, I share that. <clears throat> so all of, all of that to say, my book Shattered is a, is a story of how a, an unpredictable God can take the shattered fragments of our dreams and put them together in a more beautiful mosaic that you never saw coming. Mm. I mean, there's no way if you would have told me at that moment when that injury happened, you're going to become a Christian. No way. You're going to go to seminary. No way. You're going to do a master's degree. You're not that good of a student. No way. You're going to do another master's You're going to do a PhD. No way. You're going to have a radio show. No way. And so I want people watching to understand that, look, whatever has happened in your life, Mm. Whatever shattering has happened, whether it's a health issue, financial, relationship, physical ailment, whatever, one of the reasons God has not perhaps answered your prayer yet is that he has something better planned. That's the first thing. Mm. And then second thing, well, no, wait, wait, stop. And so and the second thing is, is that he's taking those broken pieces and forming a godly character in you. Mm. And that perhaps is the only way that he can achieve that is through this process. Mm. And so often you can only see God working in your life in the rearview mirror. And so Shattered is not just a jock book. It's not just a sports book. Uh, it's a relationship book and funny stories. And, and uh, it lays out just, you know, look, we're not into something that's silly and stupid. We're so, into right. something that changes, changes our lives. It's real. You know, you know, it, it makes me think of, of how many people I know that uh, w that'd be a perfect gift to give somebody who doesn't know God. Oh, yeah, totally. You know, because it's like, you know, you, you can tell just by talking with you, you're not a religious guy. You're someone who knows the Lord in the real world. And yeah. so that's a great gift, not just for Christians, but to give to somebody. Hey, Major League Baseball player, you got to read this. Great yeah. story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did it with Focus on the Family and Tyndale, and uh, it's getting wonderful reviews. People are reading it in four and five hours, saying they're crying and laughing and all that stuff. So it's available everywhere, but thank you for asking and, me And you know, that. The, the other thing that, uh, that, that you just said that, that uh, I think we, I just want to highlight one more time is how God can take, not just that he can take, as though sort of he didn't see it coming, and oh, I'll make lemonade out of this right. lemon that hit right. you, but rather says, you know, I think there are, I think God says there are character issues that I need to deal with oh, in your yeah. heart. And so I'm going to ordain certain circumstances that come into your life yeah. because I know that by you working through these things, right. hanging on to me, right. we're going to get through the other end of this thing and it's right. going to deal with inside issues that, uh, that, are the, that, that ultimately will help you to reflect Christ to the world right. more effectively. Right. And Isn't that, that right? happens. He, he's in that every single day. I talk about it on my show in Los Angeles all the time mm. about these very issues, about how God is still in the business of changing lives and taking those broken pieces and putting them together in beautiful mosaics. He did it in my life. And he's so still doing it. Can you look back and say, you know what? I thank God for, what, for that baseball that hit my elbow and what it produced well, in my life. Well, better yet, when I get on the other side, I'm gonna be in the, I want to be in the front row and say, Lord, I want to watch the DVD of what would have happened in my life had you not intervened in the middle of that event. Because I know, I have a good idea, I would have cheated on my wife, got involved in cocaine, ruined my career, been drunk, and just screwed up my life and been alienated from my kids. And I really think that would have happened. I, do, I was tempted to get involved in that stuff. I didn't. But I saw it all over the clubhouse. I saw it around me. That's right. And it's like, I, I, I know what would have happened. And so I can't wait to watch that DVD. That's awesome. Great being Thanks. with you, bro. You too. Thank you. Great.